Hi everyone, so we're going to look at now <laughs> differentiating trig and something called implicit. So you've done, since coming back, we've recapped the stuff, the A2 stuff that you did at the end of your first year. We've looked at probability and we've done some trig. Uh, so now we've got some more trig, but we're going to link it to differentiation. There we go. But you think like three main things are like trig, differentiating and integrating. There's absolutely shed loads of it, all linked together with things like logs and, and other such fancy stuff. Now, potentially, if the front of your pack looks slightly different, you might have an extra lesson at the bottom just about the applications of implicit differentiation. So we're going to do it kind of over five lessons, potentially, uh, where that implicit is split over two lessons. Implicit is pretty cool, to be honest. Right, let's have a look then. So it says here, sometimes you might need to find a gradient of a function where x is expressed as a function of y. So this bit here where x is expressed as a function of y. And that's what that is. And it's just the same idea. You could just, if you had something like, I don't know, x equals, well, that's quite thick, isn't it? Something. x equals y squared. Well, if I differentiate it, it's dx, because x is on the left, y is on the right, and then that's just 2y. That's fine. Now, what this does is, because your gradient is essentially just a change going up divided by a change going across, just a fraction, I can flip it. So what they're saying is that dx by dy is 1 over dy by dx, or the opposite, which is more important, is that dy by dx is 1 over dx by dy. And if you look in this example at the top here, I've found dx by dy, so then if I just flip it, that would give me dy by dx is 1 over 2y. And that's it, really, because not everything is simple as, like, y equals x squared. The equations we can get that can be quite complex. So we're going to be happy with faffing about with different letters and, and it not being y equals that you're traditionally used to. But I'd say this, the dy by dx is 1 over dx by dy, is possibly more important, but they're both equally important. Because on another topic, we do a lot of flipping the dy by dx. Uh, so there's a bit. Right, okay, so let's have a look at this then. So same idea, exactly what I've just done up there. So it says find dy by dx in terms of y. So in terms of y bit, so the y is on the right-hand side. That's what it means. So I've got x, so if I differentiate it, I've got dx by dy. x is on the left, y is on the right. 2y squared becomes a 4y, so that's that one done, and y becomes 1. And then all I do is flip it. So it's 1 over this lot there, and that's it. So there's one there for you to have a go at. Oof, can't remember how to differentiate e to the y, and it is just e to the y. There. I quite like the idea of putting brackets around the bottom. So hopefully that's okay for you. So then it says the equation of the normal to x equals cos 2y. Oh, right, okay. So it's looking a little bit more complicated. Let's find the, we've got a point though, because remember, for a normal, we need the gradient of the tangent, and we want to change it to a normal. We also want a coordinate, which we've already got. Right then. Differentiating cos, remember, sine goes to cos, cos goes to minus sine, minus sine goes to minus cos, if I'm differentiating. So my dx by dy is, the 4 is just a scaling factor, I know that cos goes to minus sine, so I know I've got a minus 
with a sine 2y. But if you remember, because of the chain rule, I differentiate this bit and stick it at the front. So I've got a 2 there as well. So what I've really got is minus 8 sine 2y prime. So the 4 was just a scaling number. Cos goes to minus sine. I differentiate the 2y and stick it at the front because I'm using the chain rule. Right then. So my gradient, my dy by dx, is 1 over, I'll put the minus on the top, no matter, 8 sine 2y. Now I've got a coordinate when y is pi by 6, so I'm in radians, aren't I? There? So double check here the coordinate, because that coordinate is telling us that we're in radians. Yeah. So dy by dx is minus 1 over 8 lots of sine. 2 lots of pi by 6 is pi by 3. Um, now then, if I put that in my calculator, it gives me dy by dx as, let's extend the page a bit, um, minus root 3 over 12 there. And remember, that's the tangent, but I want the normal. So the gradient of the normal is flip it and change the sign. But if you flip it and change the sign, serving it up, if you times by root 3 over root 3, you'd have a 12 root 3 over 3, which gives you a gradient of 4 root 3, if I served it up. So that's now the normal. Let's go back up here, fit into this space. So I'm going to use m is 4 root 3, and 2 comma pi by 6. If I'm not told otherwise, I could just use y minus y1. And that's fine. That'll do us. There. You can expand it, move it around if you want to. <laughs> so there's one for you. So you've got to remember how to differentiate e. And E is using chain rule, so you get it would be differentiate the 2y minus 3 is 2, and then just stick it at the front. Let's see if they've done it exactly the same as me. There, so we've got the, the differentiate. Now, this has just got x is e. So it's found the y bit, so I've got one now, which is e comma 2. Have I done that right then? There. No. So we've got a gradient for the tangent, which is a little bit messy with how they've done it. You might just sub it in. So that gives us a gradient of the normal, and then there it is. You can expand it if you want. Right, let's keep going. Oh, we're actually on nine minutes, so I might stop in a second. We'll do another video. Let's see what's next. I can't be right sure. It's just a question for you like that. Is that it? I might do another vid for this one. I think there's another example there. So I'll stop the I'll stop it now and do another.